If you're serious about improving your financial position, then the very first thing you need to do, in my opinion, is establish your statement of position. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what your statement of position is, I'm gonna tell you why it's important, and I'm gonna give you the tools that you need to get started. Hello guys, it's Brad here from The Guided Investor. Sorry I haven't uploaded the video in a couple of weeks. I've actually been overseas in Japan for a holiday. But I'm back now and ready to crack on with business. So today we're gonna to talk about establishing your state in a position. And this is much like a CEO setting up a balance sheet for a business. State in a position is gonna show you where you're currently at in terms of your income, your assets, and your liabilities. Now, if you're serious about improving your wealth, then don't skip this step because it basically establishes your financial foundation. Um, it's going to allow you to better understand where money needs to be allocated in the future and also to track how you're progressing. Once you have your statement of position, the idea is that you update it at regular intervals so you can track your progress. Now, I would recommend you update it a minimum of yearly. Um, but some people like to do it half yearly, some people like to do it quarterly. It's completely up to you. So, tracking your statement of position is very simple. I personally like to use Excel um, because I like to keep things paperless and it's also easy to bring back up in the future. Um, but if you're not comfortable with a computer, then by all means, feel free to use paper if you like. So let me run you through an example. This is a spreadsheet that I've set up in order to track your statement of position. And as you can see, it's very simple, it's very easy to replicate. All it is, is there's a few functions in there, I guess, to add up the different columns and things, um, but nothing too complex. Now, if you'd like a copy of this spreadsheet, then feel free to email me on brad at guideinvestor.com.au and I'll be happy to share it with you. All right, so let's jump into an example. So let's start with the income and let's say that this person has employment income and they earn 80,000 per annum. Let's say that their spouse, employment income spouse, let's say that that is 50,000 per annum. And let's say they also have a rental property which is generating income of, what, well, $300 per week, so let's say $15,600 per annum. Now, you'll notice that all of the income I put in are gross figures or pre-tax income, um, and it's important that you do it this way, in my opinion, because it's a lot easier to track. Now, if you have other sources of income, like pension payments or you know other share dividends or something like that, then feel free to put that income in here as well. Next, we wanna track the assets. So let's say these people have a principal residence worth 500,000. Let's say they have the, well, they obviously have the investment property. Let's say that's worth 300,000. And let's say they've got super um, each of 80,000. Now, you will notice that I haven't included things such as your home contents or your car as an asset. And that's because I don't believe these things are financial assets. Yes, your car might be worth $40,000, but guess what? Every year it costs you money and every year it's gonna depreciate in value. So for me, that's not a financial asset. Now you might be lucky enough to have a collector's car or something like that, which holds its value even improves in value. Then sure, that's an anomaly and feel free to put that in. Next up, we have liabilities. So this is essentially your debts. Um, so in our example, we're gonna assume that they've got the home loan against the principal residence of, let's say, 300,000. They've got the investment loan against the investment property of, say, 250,000. Um, and let's say they also have a car loan of 20,000. Yes, I've included the value of the car loan and not the car, and that's because a car loan is real, you know, it, it's a drain on your cash flow, it costs you interest, and it needs to be paid off. I think in the future I'll do a video, another video about, you know, borrowing for depreciating assets and my thoughts on it. So once you've inputted all of your assets and all of your liabilities, you're gonna get this figure down here, which is your net asset position. Now your net asset position is very simple, it's just your assets minus your liabilities, but it is the true measure of your wealth. You can have all the assets in the world, but if there's massive debts against them, guess what, you don't really own anything. 
So as you can hopefully see, setting up your statement of position is dead simple, it doesn't take you long, it's easy to do, but it is a really crucial step in the financial planning process. So if you've ever set goals before, then you've probably heard of the term smart goal setting. Um, so in other words, your goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. Now, the idea of setting up your statement of position is really there to help you achieve the M, the measurable. You also have a better overview of where you're currently at and that's gonna allow you to better allocate future cash flow. So for instance, if you look at your statement of position and your debts are incredibly high, then that's a great starting point. Improve your net asset position by paying down some debts. Or you might look at your balance sheet and realize that well, you don't really have any assets. So it's a great time to start building your different buckets of assets. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button for me and make sure you subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.